Buenos dias a todos. I am Carlos Benchaca. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm <laughs> Councilman Rafael Espinal, not the chair of the New York City Council's Committee on Immigration, but I am a member of the committee. I would like to thank you all for being here. I would also like to recognize the members of all three committees and additional council members joining us. We have Council Member Matthew Eugene from Brooklyn. We have Council Member Peter Ku from Queens. Addressing the needs of immigrant New Yorkers has never been more critical. That is why today the Committee on Immigration will vote on a package of bills that clearly establish that New York City will not be part of the federal deportation machine. I would also like to take note that the Committee on Education will be voting on a bill that ensures parents have accurate information about the DOE's policies regarding student record confidentiality and requests for assistance from non-local law enforcement, including ICE. Additionally, the Committee on Public Safety voted on a bill that creates a new local alternative to the state's disorderly conduct charge that carries a lower maximum sentence. This gives law enforcement judges and prosecutors a tool to ensure that the punishment matches the crime and reduces the risk that a low-level offense triggers collateral consequences, including those related to immigration benefits. And now back to the two bills in our committee. As you know, the city has very limited the city has limited the circumstances under which the NYPD and the Department of Correction may cooperate with immigration authorities on immigration enforcement since 2011. Intro 1558A, sponsored by the Speaker and Ferreras Copeland, would expand on that work by limiting the Department of Probation's cooperation with immigration authorities in the same way as the Department of Corrections. Additionally, Intro 1568A, sponsored by myself, Councilman Espinal, Councilman Corey Johnson and Speaker Mark, Mark, Melissa Mark Viverito <laughs> prohibits the use of city resources for the purpose of immigration enforcement to the fullest extent permitted by the law. Further, the bill prohibits law enforcement from entering into formal partnerships with ICE established by 287 agreements. The city already cooperates with ICE on its own terms through the Tainer laws. Any broader or formal arrangement would erode public trust in law enforcement and city agencies. It also wastes local taxpayer dollars. The president's irresponsible rhetoric and discriminatory policies are an affront to all New Yorkers and do not fall in line with our core values like inclusion, respect for personal privacy, compassion, and the rule of law. New York City finds strength in diversity, innovation, inclusion, justice, and fairness. That is how we have to overcome the odds in the past. That's how, that is how we've overcome the odds in the past, and that's how we will keep moving forward. Okay, okay with that said, I would like to call the row William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Immigration, Introductions 1558A, 1568A, and Resolution 1638. Councilmember Espinal. I vote aye. Eugene. Aye. Ku. Oh, aye, and I also uh, would like to request uh, to, to add my name to the sponsors. I vote of three in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. We'll leave the vote open for another 30 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have one person who would like to testify on these bills, Maya Garung, TPS recipients from Nepal. Welcome. Have a seat. Just hit the, hit the little butt, red button on the microphone when you're ready to speak and state your name for the record. Maya Guru. Good afternoon, Chairman Espanol and uh, committee members. My name is Maya Guru, and uh, I'm also a temporary protected recipient. Uh, I'm also a case coordinator at Adhikar, uh, a worker center and community center based in Woodside, Queens, that serves the Nepali speaking community. Uh, we are here today to express our uh, resounding support for Resolution 1638 calling upon the Homeland Security Secretary to extend TPS for all current TPS designated countries. On April 25, 2015, uh, my family in Nepal and hundreds of thousands 
of others were directly impacted by the devastating earthquake. Everyone in my family was in shock. My uncle's homes were broken and the entire country was in chaos. My family urged me against going back, saying it was more helpful for me to remain here in the States to support their and Nepal's recovery. I'm one of the 8,950 recipients. At Adhikar, we provided direct services to around 2,000 people for TPS in 2015 and 16. We organized TPS clinics with different legal service providers in New York City and supported people from all around the country with their questions. TPS has given thousands of individuals and their families a sense of security regarding their immigration status and work permits helping people contribute to the U.S. economy and income to support family back in Nepal. Many now also have driver's licenses, bank accounts, and health insurance, all important aspects of building a stable, productive life. College graduates have been able to get jobs to support the U.S. and Nepal's economy. TPS recipients are tax-paying families whose homes and lives are now rooted here in the U.S. When the decision for Haiti and Sudan were announced, I was scared for myself and all the people with TPS. In, the in this current climate, where immigrants are under attack, our future seems like a mere political game for people in uh, Washington. Nepal is still struggling with recovery from the earthquake, which struck during the recovery from civil war. The city of New York is no stranger to long roads of recovery. Yesterday was the five-year anniversary of Superstorm Sandy, and many families here are still in the process of recovering. And now, mass after the massive floods in southern Nepal, more people are facing life-threatening conditions. Going back to Nepal is simply not an option. My life is here. I have lived in the United States for over six years, and my home is here in Adhikar. My community is here in New York. Every day, I and thousands like me worry about whether we will be able to stay and what will become of our families if we are uh, displaced and forced back to Nepal. The uncertainty is a terribly precarious and unstable way of life. Due to recent natural and political disasters, we need Nepal to be redesignated for TPS. We hope the city, New York City Council will support immigrant families by passing Resolution 1638. We would offer two suggestions to the resolution, and uh, one, uh, an amendment to the whereas clause on Nepal that includes the recovery from the 10-year civil war and the recent mass floods in southern Nepal, and second, a pathway to citizenship for TPS recipients whose homes and lives are grounded here in the U.S. Thank you for your consideration of our suggestions to Resolution 1638 and for your support. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony and highlighting the importance of passing this resolution. Thank you so much. Thank you.